so I'm Nick Knutson. I'm the executive director at Demcast. If you don't know, uh, I think most of you do. Uh, we're a 501c4 nonprofit organization uh, focused on helping to make sure that um, uh, grassroots, uh, the grassroots has a voice and that it gets amplified in the online space. Uh, we want to lift uh, your voices and the voices of grassroots groups that are doing good work on the ground um, so that they can get be better digital traction, which is really important because digital is where people get their information uh, in this century. <laughs> And um, uh, we're, we're also joined here by Scott um, and, and he'll, he'll introduce himself more in a second, but uh, Scott's with the Dem Coalition, of course, as you all know, and Dem Coalition's a, a great organization that we're excited to partner with on this, on this uh, effort to, to get the For the People Act through um, to Biden's desk. So um, and if you're on this call, uh, then you, uh, you've probably spent the bulk of the last four years in a near state of panic, like, uh, like, like all of us. Uh, you're, you are not, um, you're not democracy curious. You're democracy warriors. Uh, you've been, in, you've been paying attention this whole time. I don't need to tell you how big a deal this bill is, but I will anyway. Um, I want to walk you through a little sort of mind exercise here. So imagine two years from now, you're waking up to the news that Justice Thomas has passed away, not hoping for anything, you know, just a hypothetical. Um, and Majority Leader McConnell and Speaker McCarthy come out swinging right away with, let the voters decide, promising to deny, you know, a, a now boxed in President Biden his pick for SCOTUS. Um, former Senator Raphael Warnock comes on Morning Joe lamenting that. Georgia voter suppression laws that kept him uh, from what should have been a slam dunk victory were the thing that doomed, uh, doomed yet another SCOTUS pick for a Democratic president. And two years later, right out of the gate in February of 2025, President Hawley uh, has his SCOTUS selection and it sails through the Senate. Republicans have a massive trifecta because GOP legislatures gerrymandered Democrats out of more than a dozen districts in states like Georgia, Texas, and Arizona. Uh, McCarthy's House is getting prepared to double down on the 2017 tax, uh, Trump tax cuts. And uh, on TV, all the retrospectives on the Biden administration look back at this moment, the opportunity to actually fix the democracy that's been broken by a party that's willing to effectively steal fair representation away from people if it means that they can retain power. Uh, they look back and say, wow, Democrats really should have done everything that they could to pass the For the People Act. And now we lose ground on every policy issues we issue we care about. And on top of all that, democracy's lost, probably irrevocably. Dark. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, not to not to not to you know open open with so much darkness, but I just want to paint a really really clear picture about a very plausible uh, future for America uh, if we don't. Thanks, Nick. If, we, we were we're all very um, <laughs> horrified now um, right. and nauseous. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. Um, so. Now for the light. So our mission here is to ensure that that does not happen. Uh, and and uh, this is our window. Uh, we, we, uh, our future can be bright and, it, and I think it will be, uh, but we have to work for it. And anybody that worked hard to get Trump out of office uh, and flip the Senate need to work just as hard right now to get this law passed. Um, so this group, uh, what we're hoping for with this group is that this group it will be the leading voice online pushing uh, for the For the People Act to get to Biden's desk for signature. Even, even if this law is all that we get done during the first two years of the Biden, Biden administration, it would be a huge victory because it sets the table for a fair electoral playing field for the rest of the decade. Um, we have the people, uh, we know this, we have the people. And when we vote, we win. So we just, near, we, we just need that fair playing field, right? Uh, the For the People Act was designed by House Democrats in 2019 after we flipped, after we flipped it blue. That was a big win. Um, 
and and back then we were still in the depths of uh, you know the Trump Trumpian slide to uh, authoritarianism, uh, and this bill is is was meant then and is expressly meant to repair the foundation of our democracy so that we can prevent future Trumps, and it will lead to the drawing of more politically uh, diverse House districts and decrease the intense polarization that we have in Congress. This bill really is the best thing for the people. Uh, we, uh, what we wanna ensure at DemCast and Dem, Dem Coalition is that you all, as the, as the voices out there, as the, the chorus, um, that you all have the tools that you need uh, to advocate for and spread the word about the For the, for the People Act online. Social media matters. Uh, this is where people get their news and information. Um, and coordinated organic amplification of strategic messaging that boosts our movement is how we're gonna push through legislation in the Biden years and beyond. The people are the best messengers for the movement because we are the movement. <laughs> so with that, I think I'm gonna uh, slide it over to Scott uh, to, to talk a little bit about sort of the, the um, the role of social media and the importance of sort of making a pivot to advocacy. So now think about if Trump won, I'm not kidding. And I used his name, it's a two for one. So take a moment and kind of, kind of what I do is look down from the mountain we climbed and think about four or five years ago, especially four years ago when we had no White House, no Congress, uh, we had no power over anything and uh, things were looking very bleak. Uh, be proud of what we've done, tout it, use the swagger that we have. Um, social media does have a huge role to play during the Biden years, but uh, it's different than it was during the former guy's years. The change is enormous and it's hard to grasp. I'm still getting my bearings about it. I'm still getting my footing. A lot of folks are. Um, so keep that in mind. We've had a lot of battles that are crazy, like crazy, outright insane. We'll look back on this in 10 years and we'll look at it as insane or more so uh, then. So, so just keep that in mind that we're still trying to figure out what it's like to lead because it's been a while. Um, everything that you do from here on out and everything you've done before on social media matters. And remember that if someone goes after you for something you're doing on social media, the entire point of that is to discourage you from using social media. So do not listen to the haters. Keep going, plow through, block uh, trolls, and report people. We're trying to work on better methods with Twitter uh, to socially organize and report trolls, but uh, it's not it's not there yet. Um, we get to go on offense for the first time in a long time. So you'll see me more uh, positive talking online about the bills that we have, the ideas we have, uh, less than attacking Republicans and just going after them. We'll still have plenty of time to make sure that we have we have to expand our, our seats in, in the Senate and the House, but uh, we have lots of work to do, do there. Um, so let's take the time now to actually plan. And that's something that I, I, it was always day by day, like the next day is carried and we had different topics that we could work on depending on what the former guy said. And so instead of being reactionary, we actually get to be offensive. Like we get to go out there and we get to play offense for the first time for real ever. Um, and so we can start to plan out and that's how we really win. That's how we really expand. And then we don't have to worry about one or two senators. Then we don't have to worry about eight or 10 reps. Um, that's, the, that's the way that we expand. Um, we, have to, we have to make sure that we, we win in the Senate, obviously. Um, that nightmare scenario shook me uh, from, from Nick, I'll tell you what. Um, if we present a united front bill by bill, we're unstoppable. I mean, look at what we've done. Look back at, at 2017 when we had no one in, we had no power in Congress, we had no power with the United States government, we had no power in White House, and we got the uh, Jeff Sessions to recuse himself, Devin Nunes to do a fake recusal, and us to get a special prosecutor appointed to investigate uh, the ties between Russia's interference and Trump's campaign. Th that's insanity. That's the people. That's the resistance. That's everything that we stood for. Um, so think about the things that we overcame before and think about where we can actually go from now. Um, our, our voice is louder than ever. And so let's make sure to use that. Just, you know, I, I just want to stress that 
again, people are going to try and uh, pick on you or do something bully to try and keep you off of social media. Don't listen to them. It is the major form of communication, especially during a pandemic. And I think it's gonna carry further from here. So, so use social media, use your voice, and we will try and amplify everybody. Um, also tout our accomplishments. Don't mind celebration. I know it is a time of turmoil. I know it is a, a terrible time. Everybody is dealing with death and uh, craziness on uh, every single day. But when you, when you have the opportunity, try and savor a moment because you earned it because you've worked your butts off. Uh, so, so take a moment to use that positivity and feed that into you and then spread it to the world and see what we can do with it. Um, and, and last thing, keep, keep uh, momentum on our side because I, right now the American people, us, um, the real American people I would say are, are on our side. Note that I know that everybody's worried about justice. Everybody's worried about uh, investigations. Everybody's worried about prosecution. Um, I am not saying stay away from any of that stuff, but, but I will say that we have so much positivity going right now that we can save lives by pushing all our legislation and we can make a difference. And if you want to really expand things in the Senate and expand things in the House and make a more progressive majority, then we need to make sure that we push for this bill to be passed. And so um, let's, let's use everything that we have to rebuild our country in the way it's supposed to operate. And, and thanks, Nick, for partnering. We're, we're happy to partner again with Demcast um, and the Dem Coalition. You know, we're going to be able to be uh, more transparent in regards to our leadership because I know that people are curious as to how are we so big and operate on such low money. Um, but we'll, we'll disclose those tricks and tactics. But again, everybody should use their social media Please don't be dismayed from that. And any of the haters, just block them out of your life. Anyways, back to you, Nick. All right. Thanks, Scott. That's great. I mean, it's, uh, it's so, you know, it's, it's fun because um, we see, uh, we all see each other so much um, in the, in the online space, uh, but it's great to, great to see you, see you on here, buddy. Um, Jamie, I think so. So now, what I what we're going to do is we're going to actually walk through some um, key pieces of the bill itself, uh, just to bring some clarity to what's actually in this monster, because it's, it's an expansive uh, piece of legislation. Um, and then we're going, and then I'm I'll I'll come back and talk about a little bit about the, our messaging strategy and what you can expect over the coming weeks. And then um, Lori will do an overview of our Speechify tool that has our, our current uh, social media uh, campaign for For the People Act in it. So I'm gonna hand it over to Jamie. All right, so this is a beast. And so over the next 10 minutes, I am going to be giving you a lot of information. So I will apologize in advance um, and we can probably send this out after. Um, so, you know, this historic piece of legislation responds to twin crises that are facing our country. First, we have attack on democracy with over 250 bills introduced in state legislatures to upend our elections. And this was all epitomized in the assault on the Capitol. And we have an urgent demand for racial justice. So this bill is really based on the key insight that the best way to defend democracy is to strengthen our democracy. If enacted, this would be the most significant voting rights and democracy reform in more than half a century. So what's in this bill anyway? Well, first of all, we have voting rights. It has automatic voter registration, which is a key component of the For the People Act, and it would transform and modernize our current registration systems. This bold approach would add literally tens of millions of voters to the rolls. It costs less, it bolsters security and accuracy. The For the People Act would also boost voter participation further by establishing same day and online voter registration. Sorry, same day and online registration. This would eliminate paperwork and waiting periods. And with a few clicks or a trip to the polls with proper documentation, eligible voters would be able to cast their ballot and vote on the same day. And the funny thing about this bill is all of this stuff is actually what Red State Utah does, which was enacted by a Republican supermajority. So they can't say that Republicans are against this because this is literally a playbook out of Utah. It also modernizes our voter registration systems um, 
And that means that not only are we registering all ed eligible voters, but it's also making sure that those voters stay on the voting rolls. The voter purges, that, which is a large scale deletion of voters' names from the rolls, often using flawed data, they're on the rise. This has been a key form of voter suppression used by election officials across the country. The bill also contains an express commitment to restore the full protections of the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. And nationally, state laws deny 4.5 million citizens the right to vote because of a criminal conviction. Over 3 million of them are who are no longer incarcerated. These laws disenfranchise them. They originate primarily from the Jim Crow era. They're shutting people out of the political system who now work, they pay taxes, they raise their families and they have paid their debt to society and they should be able to vote. The For the People Act also creates a baseline for access to mail-in voting in federal elections. It requires all states to offer vote by mail. It also offers expansions um, to tribal lands. It expands early voting and requires 15 days of early voting, including weekend and holiday, weekend and evening hours. It makes um, election day a national holiday. And the For the People Act protects voters from deception and intimidation. And it does this in three ways. First, it increases criminal penalties for false or misleading statements, as well as intimidation aimed at impeding or preventing a person from registering or voting. Second, it empowers citizens to go to court to stop voter deception. And this also applies to social media deception. Third, it blunts the effect of deceptive information by requiring designated government officials to disseminate, articulate, and correct information to voters. These provisions actually give federal law enforcement and private citizens the opportunity to stop bad actors in their tracks. Next key provision is campaign finance reform. The For the People Act addresses the problem of big money and special interests head on by amplifying the voices of everyday voters primarily through small donor matching. Small donor matching is a, is a path-breaking solution to the problem of big money in politics. While its potential may be profound, the basics of the system are simple. Candidates can opt into the system by raising enough small startup donations to qualify and accepting certain conditions such as lower contribution limits. Donors then are given the chance to um, participate with, um, by getting contributions matched by public money. The match donations would be six, basically a six to one ratio. For every dollar, you would get $6 back. This does not cost taxpayers any more money, and it does not divert funds from existing programs. Instead, it's funded by fines, penalties, and settlements paid to the government by corporations, executives, and wealthy tax cheats. The For the People Act takes several key steps to deal with dark money. First, it closes legal loopholes that have allowed dark money to profilate proliferate by requiring all groups that spend significant sums on campaigns to disclose their donors. Second, it expands transparency requirements to apply to all online campaign ads on the same terms as those run on the more traditional media. It also strengthens the paid for disclaimers that are required to be included in such ads. And any site with over 50 million unique viewers a month, it requires them to establish a public file of request to purchase political ads, very similar to what's already being done on broadcast networks. The bill also overhauls the FEC and addresses the main flaws of the FEC. It has several changes. It curtails gridlock by reducing the number of commissioners from five to six with no more than two from each party effectively requiring one commissioner to be a tie-breaking independent. It provides the commission with a real presidentially appointed chairperson to serve as chief administration officer, and it ends the practice of allowing commissioners to remain in office even after their term is expired. So, and finally, the For the People Act streamlines the commission's enforcement process by giving its nonpartisan staff the actual authority to investigate 
campaign finance violations and dismiss frivolous complaints. Next big key component is redistricting. This offers bold and comprehensive solutions to the problem of gerrymandering. It requires states to use independent redistricting commissions to draw congressional maps and imposes a uniform set of rules for how districts should be drawn, expressly outline partisan gerrymandering and prioritizing criteria like geography so that the communities have a shared interest. Redistricting abuses is a bipartisan problem. Both parties will draw districts that serve their ends if given the opportunity. But too often it's the communities of color that bear the brunt of these efforts. Without a rule that, dis, that makes disadvantaging voters of color for partisan gain illegal, this type of discrimination will continue and it will grow. Finally, the For the People Act transforms what has historically been an opaque process into one that's transparent and participatory. Commission business would be conducted in open meetings and are subject to oversight. And data would be required to be available and all, commu all communications subject to disclosure. That is huge. Of course, we know what happened in 2016 and what the Republicans are saying happened in 2020. So this bill provides for election security. It significantly bolsters the security and the infrastructure of our elections. Among the most critical reforms, it requires states to replace unsecure paperless voting systems by mandating the replacement of all voting machines that with a uh, paper trail. It also promotes robust audits of electronic elections by providing funding for states to implement audits using statistical models to ensure that a su sufficient number of ballots are checked to corroborate the electronic vote tallies, known as risk limiting audits. And finally, the bill imposes new requirements for private election system vendors and provides for greater federal oversight of those private vendors. These people actually maintain and store our personal information that tabulates our votes and they and communicates important election information to the public. Right now, it's completely owned by the vendors and the government and the states have no say in what happens to those machines. And then a key piece, of course, is ethics. We must establish stronger ethic, ethics rules for all three branches of government. These provisions would be essential for a step towards shoring up and the, and it's on self-dealing of the highest levels of government. It requires the president and vice president to adhere to the same broad ethical standards as millions of government employees who work under them, consistent with voluntary practices to which every president has adhered to until President Trump or the former guy. It requires the president and the vice president and candidate to actually release their tax returns it strengthens the Office of Government Ethics. It strengthens congressional safeguards against conflicts of interest, strengthens the revolving door between government and industry, and it requires a code of ethics for the United States Supreme Court. So I know that was a lot of information, but that is the basic overview. Come on, there's gotta be more. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like the big five or six slices. Right. Um, the actual bill is hundreds of pages of long. long so, yeah, no, it's a uh, it, it's a monster, um, and uh, it, but it's uh, it's so it really does hit so many really key uh, um, points for saving our democracy. It's got the it's got the um, you know movement toward public financing of elections. It's got, um, you know, increasing access to voting. It's got uh, ending gerrymandering. It's got ethics reform uh, to um, hold people accountable for abuses of power and try to avert them in the first place. I mean, it, it really is kind of the, oh my gosh, I really wish that we had made this bill in the, you know, early 2000s so that we never would have had to <laughs> go through what we went through, yeah. you know, uh, for, from, the, from the Obama years all the way through the Trump years, but. Yeah, and uh, the Brennan Center released a great chart today yeah. that yeah. shows state by state what this law would do for 
each state and their voter suppression laws. So the, I just put that in chat and that is something that everybody should bookmark because it is an amazing resource. So I'm gonna um, go ahead and share my screen here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys our uh, website where we're gonna be kind of storing a bunch of this stuff. If I can get to it here, hang on a sec. Okay. Um, okay, I'll just share my screen. All right, because I can't find the window because I have like a zillion tabs open. Okay. Uh, so here is, um, uh, it's uh, demcast.com slash for the people. Uh, I just finished putting the bones of this together last night. We'll be updating it and making it um, sleeker and everything as we go. But this is this is where we'll we'll make sure that we uh, drop all of the links um, that we share on any of these calls. We will drop we will uh, host the recorded video of this call and of future calls on this site, so that you just have a you have one place that you can go to to find all this stuff. Uh, but it's got um, just a quick tour here, um, kind of key links here if you haven't actually signed up to join our social media team so that you get all the emails and all that kind of stuff. Um, you, can, you can do that or sh share it with other people. Uh, sign up for the Zoom calls. If you're on this call, you've already signed up. You only need to sign up once for the Zoom call. Um, and you'll be able to use that same link every week uh, uh, for these Tuesday calls moving forward. Um, this is the link to our social media uh, uh, campaign uh, toolkit that uh, Lori will walk through in a few. And then we also have a link here for um, sending a, a letter to your senators. And then um, the, this section or with messaging will we'll probably change a lot, but it just this is going to provide sort of the latest updates on what our messaging strategy is and how it's evolving as the, as the bill makes its way through the Senate. Um, and then down, I, want, I did want to show you this section. So this is the what's in the bill section. This is kind of our like resources section. It's got, um, you know, synopsis from the house, a synopsis from the Brennan Center. Uh, this, uh, this link here shows um, really good concise bullet points from Rep Sarbanes, um, who was the key author of the bill. Um, and uh, it is a great place if you're if you're looking to do a sort of a native po social media post. That's a great place to go and just find one of the many many nuggets of of coolness that are that are in this bill and uh, and share it out. Um, so so we'll 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 just keep growing this section. We'll, and so we'll put that new Brennan Center link in there, and uh, and so you can always come back there and see what's new. Um, and we'll so we'll share that uh, we'll share the link. Did you guys share the link while I was talking? No. Um, we, we'll we'll be sure to share that link. I will send that. I will also send this out via email. We make sure we'll make sure that everybody has it. Um, so about so so now sort of thinking about what what uh, what is this team and and what are we going to be working on? So um, think of yourselves, I guess, as a for the People Act ambassador. Uh, that's how I'm starting to think of myself. Uh, the one of the um, was, uh, the Dan, Dan Pfeiffer's message box this week had a had a, um, a stat in it that only when when de they did a, po a recent poll of Democrats only and they asked what are your top three legislative priorities for this uh, for the early sort of part of the Biden administration only seven percent said the for the People Act. Or democracy reform, or anything, um, and so there's just there's a um, there's a gap. People don't get how how important this bill is. It, maybe it's because it was released under the same name in the last Congress, and so it's it's not catching people. Um, but we have a big job to do in terms of public education and activation around this. Um, the, the, we aren't going to be able to. Um, convince uh, the uh, 
you know, the mansions and the cinemas of the world to uh, get rid of the filibuster to pass this thing unless, unless there's overwhelming demand for it coming from the public. Um, so, so we have a big job to do in the, in the coming weeks that we'll get a big assist from, uh, from the administration, from the House and from the Senate who all understand how important this is and will start telling the story. Um, but, uh, but it's, it's th this, uh, this group, this, just this group right here has a lot of firepower online. Uh, and we can do a lot and we can, um, take the ball pretty far down the field in terms of um, starting to uh, make, make sure that people understand what's in the bill and get people uh, excited about supporting it. Um, so that's, that's kind of our really, really big um, goal right out of the gate is more kind of a public education um, uh, sentiment with, with our posts. Um, what we don't wanna do is get into, um, get too deep into wars about um about the filibuster quite yet um we don't we don't want to go attacking um as tempting as it is and boy i've done it before uh, uh mansion and cinema and others who are who are balking at the idea of of uh nuking the filibuster a lot of this stuff is just Washington DC song and dance, and it's hard to tell what's real and what's just posturing from people. And, I, and so I think if we can focus really, really intently on just um, increasing the, the, the public demand for the passage of this bill, then it'll be a lot harder for them when it comes time to really pull the, pull the trigger on the filibuster uh, to, um, to, to, to block it. So well, speaking of that, we do have a question of what will it take to end or change the filibuster to get this passed. Yeah, and I, th and I think that I, th I think I'm kind of speaking to that. I think the, we need to get this as, I mean, you, there's eliminating the filibuster, you know, um, for everything. And then there's sort of sm smaller um, reform to the filibuster that could help us get this particular bill passed. But I think um, in, uh, in any case, the, the immediate, in the immediate term, just making sure that people are calling for this thing to, to, to be passed is the most important thing. But eventually we will have to apply concerted pressure on specific senators to, um, to agree to, to shift, the, shift the filibuster or to at least reform it. I think we're we're doing ourselves a bit of a disservice if we talk if we're if we're using the language of elimination eliminate the filibuster because it's probably it's less likely um, and um, I think I think to the extent that we can be if if we're if we're foreshadowing this or, or talking about it um, I think uh, using the framing of filibuster reform is probably better because it's more likely. So there's there's various options on this that we'll walk through on future calls too, as we get closer to the need to push really hard on that. Um, but there's, uh, you know, Joe Manchin has um, indicated that he's open to going back to the talking filibuster. So, so, um, so that it's not just a procedural filibuster where somebody can just like, um, uh, block something without ever having to really do anything. <laughs> um, but, but going back to the talking filibuster is one, uh, having it be 60% um, uh, of the people who are on the floor at the time of the vote is another, as, as opposed to 60% of the whole Senate uh, is another one. Um, there's been talk of um, eliminating, you know, they eliminated the filibuster for judicial nominations and, and other nominations. So there's been talk of maybe we should eliminate the filibuster for democracy reform. Um, you know, the Senate, this is all just Senate rules. So they can, uh, they can do whatever they want. Um, it's just, they have to find a solution that everybody can agree with. And it's more likely to be one of those options than the, just the absolute elimination of the filibuster altogether. So that's just an important thing to note. And don't you think, Nick, that the, the pressure point, um, on is not really about the filibuster. The filibuster. The regular people don't give a flip about a filibuster, okay? And they care about, 
you know, why I can't just go register to vote on voting day and, you know, why, um, you know, why, why can't I have a tax child credit and why, why can't I have help with child care and why can't I have health care? That's what they care about. And so um, I, I've renamed the filibuster um, with this new hashtag and you're welcome to use it. It's called hashtag why we can't have nice things. All right, so the, the filibuster is, is the GOP's way of keeping us from having the good stuff. Um, and we need to tell people, well, we would have liked to have done voting reform. Sorry, you know, um, and as far as getting it to, you know, Mansion and Cinema and, and these people, you know, we, we have to focus on what they want. If they want uh, voting reform, then that's their pressure point, right? If, if there's something coming up in one of these bills and there's going to be a crap ton of bills coming out from the house with lots of good stuff, there's something that they, they that's the, really their pressure point, then that's where we pressure them on the filibuster, not the filibuster itself. Go for the, the big, um, the thing that the people want. I um, mean, that's how we convince these senators is because when we have lots of people saying, I want this, why can't I have this? And the reason is the filibuster, the, sen the senators can make that connection. But we don't have to tell them that. Sorry. That, that's what people care about. Why the, the Senate, the, the Congress is doing stuff that affects their daily lives. They don't, they're not political junkies like we are where you know, we know these terms, the filibuster, we know which committees, you know, are going to hear this bill. Most people don't care. It's our job to make them care about how it impacts their lives. We care about this shit, so you don't have to, is Nick's, um, <laughs> we obsess about this shit, so you don't have to. Um, that, that's, that's Nick. Um, but, but yeah, but, but I'm a firm believer if it hadn't been for COVID, we would have the second term of Trump. And that's because what's the one thing that happened during his disastrous four years that actually impacted people? It was COVID and not responding to COVID. And when your grandma dies, then that gets real. But other than that, you know, GOP tax cut, it didn't affect, it didn't affect them. They, they didn't see it. Um, so we've got to say, well, we could have had this, you know. <laughs> And that's where yeah. we go after them. Yeah, I think that's a really important point. And, and so, yeah, it, 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 if you think about this as a public messaging campaign, the bulk of, I mean, we're, we're political addicts. So that's where we're, we're a unique breed. The bulk of people out there don't know what a filibuster is or don't, and don't understand it. I think the idea is that there's a small minority of people in one body of Congress who are keeping the good, the good stuff from happening, like Lori says, and that, and that's the kind of frame that we really need to pound, pound on as much as possible, because, because it's unfair, and it's, and it, the, the, the Senate isn't supposed to have a veto. The, the minority leader is not supposed to have a veto, um, for, for popular legislation. So, um, we will, we will, we will get there on the, on, on, and we'll, we'll uh, be working with some, some folks who are smarter than we are, are like, like the Dan Pfeiffer's of the world to try and. Uh, Try and come up with just the right kind of frame around around the filibuster as we as we proceed toward that time when we really need to push hard, hard, hard on that. Um, and in the meantime, it's really <laughs> filibastered. I like that <laughs> in the chat. Uh, <laughs> and in the meantime, it's really just it's a, it's about making sure that people know what's in this really really excellent bill. Um, so uh, uh, you know we're um, I said we weren't going to take the whole hour, and I'm going to try and try and stick to that. I want to just preview a little bit of what's to come. So this is just our kickoff call. On future calls, I will say we have some cool, very cool guests coming. Um, the, there's this guy, um, Jamie Harrison, I think his name? Yeah, yeah, Jamie Harrison, who's the, uh, he, he ran for some office and now he's- I think he's I've heard of him before. Yeah. 
Uh, so he is he he has a great they have a, they have confirmed he is going to join one of these calls uh, uh, on a on a coming Tuesday. My senator Ron Wyden is uh, is going to join one of these calls, uh, and we've got a bunch of other really cool uh, people who are going to come on and help us think through and talk about how to uh, how to message this and just p play up for for everybody for the whole team here how important it is this work that we're doing. Um, so that'll be really fun. So definitely don't miss these, uh, don't miss these, uh, these calls. Um, we, we have uh, created some issue based, so if you're on Twitter, not everybody I think is, but if you're on Twitter, we've create, created some issue based um, uh, Twitter direct message rooms. Um, that and what one of those issues and the big one, obviously, that we're pushing hard is is for the People Act slash voting rights. Uh, if if you would like to be added to one of those rooms and aren't aren't already in it, uh, Jamie, maybe you can drop the um, the the link in there. And um, that one I probably won't share on the web page because I don't want maybe everybody in the whole world to just start start responding to that. But definitely everybody who joined here. Um, would be a good um, a good potential add there, and then uh, just for ha for and this sort of this is this is in the weeds here, but for hashtags um, we're go we're going to be using the hashtag hashtag for the people act, um, uh, and is is a, is our main one, and then um, the one that we're using in addition to that is hashtag pass f t p a. Um, and I'll type that in chat. And it's it's on it's on all our social campaigns. Oh, you're muted. How did I don't even know how that happened? Um, I'll I'll put it on the website. Um, and um, but that one is one that people don't really know what the FTPA is. But I think when you when you combine when you use it in conjunction with hashtag for the People Act, I think people will get it. And we're gonna. Eventually, people are going to stop saying "for the People Act." For the People Act, everything becomes an acronym. So let's just get ahead of it. Uh, this is going to be the FTPA once it passes. There will be an FTPA uh, uh, in our lives for a very long time. Um, so we're go we're going to start using that. Um, one one benefit of that is because it's it's a unique hashtag. It hasn't been used, so we can really track our team's uh, impact on the conversation online. If, if we're using that one. So definitely use that one. Um, I think that was it for my, my main notes. Uh, and then Laura, you wanted to do the Speechify overview and then we can use whatever balance we have for the for, quest, for outstanding questions. Yes, I'd be glad to. All right, um, just a couple of questions. Um, I wanted to say that, that we're talking about uh, fighting disinformation. Um, what, what we find is it's, it's better not to, when you're fighting just disinformation in general, you, it's better not to repeat the disinformation. It's better to share the correct information and share it widely and broadly. So um, that does sort of lead into um, our social share campaign. But if you're seeing talking points that aren't being um, debunked by some of our shares, feel free to, to let us know that. Um, I'm going to um, go ahead and give you guys a link to the social share campaign. I think several of you have used one of these before, and I'm going to share my screen very quickly. Um, and uh, um, we, we had a question real quick about the, um, the hashtag, just asking, should, should, the, should we also use the Demcast hashtag? If you can fit it, great. Um, I would, for, for the purposes of this campaign, I would prioritize the other two. Um, obviously it's great to include that because it widens the, widens the impact, um, but sometimes you're running up against character limits, so. Right. Stinking Twitter. We complained when we only had 140 and now we can't do with 280. Right. Um, okay, so this is the landing page of the social share campaign. I'm on the computer, so it shows me these options. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and a direct message option. Um, if you are on your phone, you will also see a text message option. And if you haven't used that, which a lot of people have primarily have used Facebook and Twitter, um, 
primarily Twitter, we would really encourage you to start thinking about who in your circle might not know what this is about. Because when it's people to people messaging and sharing, then that's when you really start to bring awareness. And when it's your friend texting you something, hey, have you seen this? This is really important. You give that a lot more credit, I would think, than just a random social user that you happen to follow um, you know, on Twitter. So there's, there's some definite um, big advantages to thinking about educating the people in your circle. And like I said, we, we care about that. We, we, we know about all this shit, so, so you don't have to do all of it. So, um, but this will help educate the people in your circle. So you choose which social media that you want to um, send this to. Um, also, Instagram is not on here because Instagram isn't really made for sharing um, on a, a desktop, but it would be another option if you are using your mobile. And most, I think about 70, 65 to 70% of our users use mobile at some, some point. So I'm gonna say, say we're gonna go to Twitter. And when you go to, um, you'll see um, different posts that you can choose from. It's up to you. You could share every single one of them. You could share one a day. Um, share the ones that make sense to you that you think people will be interested in. Um, Jamie's added several videos and GIFs and the pictures here are just basically a little snapshot of what the video start is going to be. So you'll be able to see what that looks like um, before you share it. <coughs> Same thing with the Twitter GIFs, it's just a picture. And then we also have some Espanol uh, tweets. So if you it, are it, finished, it, paper, it's just a picture in the in, in the in here. But when you, when right. you publish it on I, on Twitter, it'll it'll be a a gif or a video. It'll yeah. be a gif. It won't yep. show here, but it will once I um, post the tweet. It should show then. Um, and now you can see there's my gif playing right there. Um, so that's how, that's how quick and, and easy it is to use on Twitter. It's very quick. Um, you can also, when you select one of these, you can customize it. So um, let's say you want different um, emojis here. You could go through and change those emojis. So that's, that's really easy. The other thing you can do is you can even schedule th those suckers. So I can schedule this thing to go out. I don't probably want it to go out on the 21st, but let's say I want it to go out uh, tomorrow morning and I'll hit confirm. It'll bring me back here and this is where you will customize it. So you schedule first, then customize, okay? And I hit schedule and it will be sent tomorrow um, from my account. I don't even have to be online when that happens. Um, if you have Twitter and Facebook, let's say, then when you hit this little down arrow and this is the same functionality on your, on your phone, you just select which one you wanna send. So I've said I wanna send this via direct message um, it's going to ask me, who do I want to send it to? Well, I'm going to send it to my friend, Nick. So I can send it just with an email. That's how quick and easy it is. If I'm on my phone, I can send it via text, via WhatsApp, via Facebook messaging, which, whichever I want. And then I want to show you the Facebook because Facebook's a, a, a little bit different. Um, so when I hit customize and share, it automatically copies the text. And when I go to Facebook, I have to paste the text in there. Okay, and then 
I'm just going to share it. Um, I'm going to share it to my story, which I've really never figured out what that is. But anyway, there it went. It's shared to my story. And it's it's done. We're, we're, we're such big Facebook fans over here. At we love Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, so, you know, you got you to gotta do what you got to do. There's people on there, so you got to gotta play the game. Um, okay. So did, were there any other outstanding Q&A questions, Lori, or did we get to them all? Um, I think, let's see. Um, I saw somebody asking about um, HR1 is the hashtag, and we're really getting away from that because it has passed um, the House, and so um, we don't need to pressure people on HR1. It's it's a done deal. Um, if you um, wanted to do the um, uh, the S1, you could, but I think for the people, Act really tells people. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, so I think, you know, it's 555. I promise less than an hour. So let's call it. Um, again, we will be sharing absolutely everything, including the video of the, the recording of this session, uh, all the links, everything. I'll, I'll put almost all of it up on the website. So, um, and I'll, and we'll email out the link to the website. So you, you, you guys should have everything that you need uh, to get going. Uh, you know, hit that uh, hashtag pass FTPA, uh, you know, go, go to that hashtag daily. Amp let's amplify each other. Let's lift each other up uh, and, uh, and just try and try and keep, get, try, keep, keep getting the word out about this because um, the clock's ticking and the Senate's going to really start considering this in the next few days. One final thing that Jamie sent right before, uh, uh, watch out tomorrow morning, uh, Senator Warnock is going to be uh, on the floor giving a his first floor speech about voting rights. And I'm sure that HR1 is going to be uh, a, a piece of that. And uh, I'm going to be watching that because uh, he's, he's quite a speaker. Um, so, so My understanding is it's going to pretty much all be about this. So yeah which is awesome. So we should, we'll try and pull some, pull some video of it and maybe we can use that for, for and, some video clips. And we believe that um, it will formally be introduced in the Senate right after his speech. Cool. So. And, and Jamie, I, if I, did, it, did that email have the time? Uh, it's 1245 Eastern, I believe. Yeah. So uh, morning on the West Coast, early afternoon on the East Coast. So. Uh, thank you all so much. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it was really great to have you here. Uh, remember, we'll have, keep having cool guests uh, for all these calls, and uh, we'll see you out there. Thank you very much. Wear a mask, get vaccinated. I know I don't have to tell you all, but go tell someone else. <laughs> April 2nd! Woohoo! <laughs> nice. Okay. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>